Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor Scott and today we're going to be doing a book review on Hollow City by Ransom Ricks. This is the second book in Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children series. So if you don't want to be spoiled, make sure you check out the first book so you can click on that for a brief description. And without further ado, let's get into the book review. in three, two, one. So the Peculiars leave the island because they're followed by the Whites. They find a loop in the giant's mouth with peculiar animals and they meet Addison. Addison tells them that Miss Peregrine has been poisoned and Fiona and Claire stay back in that loop while the rest of the group goes to London to find somebody to heal Miss Peregrine because only an inbreak can heal another inbreak. Boom. So they encounter a group of gypsies and the gypsies were going to turn them over to the authorities until the head honcho, Becker, found out that they were peculiar and he saved them because his kid is also peculiar. So the gypsies take them to the train station. At the train station, they are attacked by whites. Hugh manages to get away, but Hugh has to save the day, and he saves the day by releasing the bees. The kids finally make it to London. They're going to the St. Paul's to try to find a pigeon because a pigeon can contact Miss Wren, and they're trying to find Miss Wren to turn Miss Peregrine back. So they go to St. Paul. They end up finding Melina, Joel and Peter, and Esme and Sam. In another unused train station, they find another loop. And then in that loop, they finally find Miss Wren. Woo! And in order to find that loop, Peregrine ends up killing the pigeon that took them to the loop. At the loop, they end up finding Miss Wren, who takes the Peregrine away to transform the Peregrine back into a human state. And we find out that it is not Miss Peregrine. It is, in fact, Cal. And Cal is a white. <gasps> Ooh, crazy, right? So then... Because he's a white, he's contacted all his other white friends. The Peculiars get escorted back into present day time with some shenanigans that happen. Jacob and Emma happen to get away, and they get away with Addison, but then a hollow is about to kill them. But Jacob uses his mind to control the hollow, and then the hollow obeys. And that's it. Favorite moments. So, my first favorite moment is reading from The Tales of the Peculiar, and it starts out, Once Upon a Peculiar Time, and I'm like, oh, Once Upon a Peculiar Time, that's so genius. And then we have the story of Cuthbert, the giant who helped peculiar animals escape from the hunters. The story was morbid, and I was like, yes, it's like a Grimm's Brother story, this is great. And I loved how those stories, and they found out that those stories actually held some truth into them to find ancient loops. My next favorite moment is Jacob developing his abilities, okay? He's starting to learn how to track hollows and how to sense where they're going to land, like when they're in that loop, and he knows the hollow is going to jump there so he can predict it and tell when to put the boulder at that spot. That was a really good moment. And I also like, at the end, he's discovering that he can talk to hollows and control hollows. I'm like, yes, this is the key to save the world. In this loop, we meet Addison McHenry, oh yeah. Addison is the best dog ever. He gives info and supplies to the peculiar children and helps them along the way. When the gypsies finally were nice and became on their side after the whites showed up and one of the gypsies pretended to be a bear and went Rawr! And then they escorted them to the train station to London. And the peculiars also helped the gypsies escape when Hugh attacked the whites with his bees. It was just a really nice, fulfilling relationship that was beneficial for both parties, and I loved it. It was really funny. It was really funny when Miss Peregrine pretended to be a bird, a wind-up bird. When Hugh saves the day, I talked about it before, but we're gonna talk about it again. Oh, it's iconic. He was really like, ah, and bees just went, and then he saved the day. I was like, wow. And I was just like, yes. Because Enoch was like, oh, his powers were useless. His powers were never useless, okay? I am scared of bees and yellow hornets and all those other things, okay? And Hugh has control of them, so his powers were never useless. On the train while they're going to London, Hugh tells the story of how he met Fiona, and I'm like, oh, true love, heart. Millard is so smart, he figures out how to track the pigeons because of a story where the pigeons are in St. Paul's, and so they go to St. Paul's. When Olive finds Miss Wren, granted, <laughs> it was a risky move, 
But the fact that she found her baby so freaking happy. I was like, yes, Miss Wren, finally a success, yes. And we meet a bunch of people with Miss Wren, like Althea, and Althea is so powerful. She just like ices the place up and she does it so quickly. Oh, she's so powerful. I'm so sad that she's dead. That's Oh, I'm so sad. When they're exploring the map of days and they find out that the map is largely unexplored, I'm like, Jacob, you always wanted to be an explorer. Now is your chance. Don't you see? You belong in a peculiar world. Don't go back. But anyway, he was like, I must go back and be with my family and run and run and run. And last but not least, the escape was doom doom epic. When Emos uses her fire abilities to, you know, break the shackles and attack the whites. And then when Wynn slaps apart the brothers and the brothers you know do their little Wah! scream because they're separated and then that all causes things to come crashing and Jacob and Emma get away with Addison the dog oh it was great it was great and then when Jacob finally controlled the hallow I was like yeah yeah woohoo So the first yikes moment is on me. This book made me so paranoid, okay? Literally, I'm reading the book and every time someone even looks in the direction, I'm like, that person's a white, you need to beware, they're evil, ugh, don't trust them, ugh. So, good job of making me scared. Uh, next, Emma and Jacob are kissing at the most inopportune times. Like their first kissing on when they first arrived in the mainland in Wales, and the whites are attacking them and they're just like, oh, let's make out at this moment. And then the whites find them because they're making out on like the edge of the, on the mainland. And of course they can be seen, they're in plain sight. I don't like it. Emma's story was so sad how when she first had her abilities, her mother left her and then her dad beat her and kept her locked away in her room and the only reason she got away is from her sister. It was a really sad story, it was a touching story, and it makes you understand why she doesn't trust as easily as all the others did. What's really sad is that Hugh only has one B left, and he only has one B left because after the attack on the whites and saving his friends and the gypsies, he had to use a lot of bees, and then when they arrived to London and the adults attacked them because they thought that the youngins were supposed to be um, taken out of London for the safety, he had to use those bees to attack the adults, and in that process, now he only has one bee left. It's really, really sad because his bees are him and those were his friends and now, yeah. Call me a Debbie Downer, but I was kind of upset when they were having fun. Yeah, I'll say that again. I was upset when they were having fun and I was upset, not upset, but I was like, dude, you do not have time to be having fun and playing games trying to maneuver through London, okay? No one has time for this. You need to get to St. Paul's efficiently Find this Wren and change Peregrine back into Peregrine, period, okay? I started becoming really, really, really extremely frustrated when Jacob would exclude the fact that he's having all these interactions with hollows. Like when he was walking through the tunnel in the crypt and he's like, hmm, I feel a hollow presence here, but I think they've gone away, so I'm not gonna mention it. I was like, no, mention it, because guess what happened? Hollows came, tried to come after them in the loop. And then they came back into 1940. So obviously the hollows were still there and he had told them, hey, I'm getting some hollow residue. The peculiar children may have been more prepared. And another thing is when he's putting, when he finds the hollow in ice in the other loop and he ends up touching the hollow's head and the hollow and him are having a connection. I was like, why would you tell anybody? Emma's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, nothing, 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 no. No, tell Emma that you're seeing freaking hollow. Sam ends up not going with the group because her sister Esme is not peculiar and because Esme is not peculiar she can't go through loops and she can't do other stuff and because of Enoch, and we'll get to him later, Enoch saying that um, non-peculiar people are not as important as peculiar people and so Sam obviously doesn't want Esme to be in that environment and she doesn't want to be in that environment either. Well, I was really upset because Sam was on the cover, you know, I was like, ooh, cover girl, she's on the cover, holding her middle, yeah, that's her. But she was literally only there for such a little time. I feel that somebody there was more important, probably would have been, I don't know, the brothers, Joel and Peter, or Melina, you know, you know someone who was actually in the book for a long time period. 
like they did this with the first book. Book they probably should have been Emma on the cover because Emma plays a larger part. You see what I'm saying? You need to put the main premise, main character on the front cover, otherwise it confuses people. But it is a nice cover. Another yikes moment is when Peregrine kills the pigeon, and I'm thinking about this, and I'm gonna put this in trick. I'm a detective, but. I was like, wow, the bird is becoming the bird and less like the peregrine, and it was so insane. Oh, I was like, no, why would you do that? No, why are you, oh, stop. But it made sense in the end. Jacob and Emma's relationship, I think I've made this pretty clear that I'm not really team Gemma, as I guess their name is. Uh, so when Jacob was like, oh, for you, you idiot, I love you. I was like, oh gosh, okay. It was just because Emma wants him to go back to his current time and he wants to stay because he loves her. And I was like, you shouldn't stay because you love someone. You should stay because you want to help people find success and get rid of the evil in the world. But yes. And the last sex moment is when we're in present time and Jacob's talking to his dad and his dad's like, look, son, you're confused. You're on drugs. And I was like, no, he's not on drugs. He's peculiar, which he ends up saying. But oh, no, you don't understand. <laughs> This is the table, we're shaking it. So we're at Shake the Table, and my first moment is when Horace says, the true purpose of money is to manipulate people and make them feel less than. I just thought it was interesting. I just thought it was a nice outlook on today's society, and for that, I would like to say thank you, Ransom Riggs, for shaking the table. The next moment made me really upset. It was harassment of Emma, okay? Everyone, when she was captured and the white was like feeling her up, I was like, no, stop it. Women's bodies are not for you to objectify and sexualize. Stop it. This happens all the time. And I'm glad Ransom Riggs included it because it's shaking the table and we have to change society and hold people accountable for harassment. Welcome to my TED Talk. So this last one is fight or flight when the peculiar children are confronted with the idea of after Peregrine turns back into herself, are they going to stay and fight or are they going to try to get in a loop and escape? And I think this was a very important discussion because what do you do? It's the fight or flight instinct. What do you think is going to help you versus what's going to help the other people? And I think it was just a really good discussion because obviously they are also confused and they're still trying to work through what they should do in this situation. Obviously, the decision doesn't matter because they get captured. But anyway, it was a good discussion to have. I said I would get to him and I got to him. We're looking at Enoch, okay? Enoch is a complex character, a piece of work, something to be dissected. <laughs> so he's so narcissistic, okay? He doesn't believe anything will be possible. And it, it gets to me. I don't like it. Stop. But I think what we really need to talk about is how he has this complex. This complex that peculiars are more important than everyday people. And because of that, I'm going to talk about this later. I think he's going to end up switching sides. That's just a prediction. He only cares for his own personal gain. Like when he's thinking about others, he's, when they were looking at the emergency truck, and he was like, well, we need to get X, Y, and Z. And when is like, no, but other people may need this truck. And he's like, well, it doesn't matter what they need. We need it. I was like, no. You can't do that. This character is just, this character is indicative of the evil I, we see in human nature. I'm gonna say that again. His character is indicative of the evils we see in human nature. And I think it was important for Ransom Riggs to include this because to embody all these evils in a character, especially in a character that's in the core group of friends, I think it's important because it's showing that, hey, these people are everyday people that are in your group, okay? You see them and they have these complexes that they're better than everyone else, that they better more than anybody else. And I think it was important because only when your friends hold you accountable can change really happen. So thank you Ransom Riggs for including that. I liked how his foil, I liked how Enox's foil was when, even though you can stereotype her that she appears to be strong, therefore she's not gonna care about people, but she was the most caring person throughout the entire book she was so sincere, she was a protector, she was strong and compassionate, and I think it was really important to include her as the foil to Enoch because he was so narcissistic and concerned for himself. Okay, so I'm introducing this new slide, and this new slide is called Zinger, and it's going to be for lines that really shocked who they were talking to, or just epic lines that were all encompassing of the awesomeness, which is really just the last line. But yeah, let's get into it. 
We would have been killed ages ago if you were in charge. Excuse me, out of the way, best dress going first. Do you ever find yourself climbing into an open grave during a bombing raid and just wish you'd stay in bed? No, Dad. I'm peculiar. I'm peculiar. These are gonna be some of the most outlandish predictions that I have ever made thus far. Okay, number one, when Fiona decided to stay with Claire and Hugh and, and Fiona had that nice little intimate moment, I think Fiona stayed with Claire because Fiona is preggers. I have no evidence, I have no proof, it's just a hunch, we'll see what happens. When we discovered the taking of a peculiar second soul, I immediately thought this is what's going to happen to Millard because we have this foreshadowing of him wanting to see his own body again and wanting to interact with people. So obviously his soul is going to be taken and he's going to revert from being invisible to visible and this is only further proven when we get to the loop with Miss Wren and we find out that the people that have already had their souls taken from the soles of their foot, that one of them who was invisible is now visible as day. So. Look out for that. Pigeons at St. Paul's. It annoyed me that they didn't immediately think, oh, we need to find the basement of some sort because it says the pigeons would go to visit the dead guy. So where do pigeons go to visit dead people? Underground. Underground of the cathedral is what? The basement. But it turned out to be the crypt. But in a way, there was, in fact, a loop there. So they should have thought about that immediately. And I was mad that they did. And this last one, I didn't predict. I was stoned for a loop. Get it? Thrown for a loop? Because, you know loops <laughs> okay so peregrine is not miss peregrine it is her brother cow cow who is a white okay and i thought the clown that we saw was a spy but really it was cow and cow is a white and he was able to contact his other whites to surround the perimeter to intercept everybody and take Miss Wren. It was a ploy to get Miss Wren because Miss Wren is the only embrain that escaped the whites and the hollows grasps. And I was thrown, 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 thrown. I did not expect that at all. So as the other predicted, Enoch will switch to the other side. And my last prediction is obvious that Jacob will end up manifesting his powers more and more. He's gonna use his powers to save his friends and the embrains. Boom. So that concludes this book review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope to see you next time when I'm doing other book reviews. And I'm also going to start doing Bachelor reviews because if you know me, you know I love The Bachelor. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell notification so you don't miss out on when I post. And all that's left to say is bye bye